Hey, CT family, welcome to the Healing Place podcast. I'm Brian Hackney, the director of the Healing Place. And whether you heard about us on the weekend services or someone shared this episode, we're glad you're here. Welcome home. So we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in our Power Up series. And in this episode, my Healing Place team and I talk about how to have relationships that are in communion with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me and the Holy Spirit lives in you. But what does it mean to have relationships where, as we call them around here, the level 10 relationships where the Holy Spirit has free reign in our lives? So join us as we talk about that and a few other things that I'll leave to your imagination. Hello team, we're back talking about the Holy Spirit. How are y'all doing? Doing good. 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 Hey, hey. Good. Glad to be here. Uh, Glenna, right after we finished our last episode, you said, I think that was the best one we've ever done. I felt like it was just, I mean, it flew by the time. It did. And um, I felt like we could just... Yeah. yeah. We were just flowing with it. Keep and yes. um Honestly, I just got to say personal though, I love being with you guys. Oh, um, same here, man. Yeah. I love to your that. point about, you know, coming off of snow apocalypse, it is good to be with people That's and right. have a little change of scenery. That's right. Um, and be with people that just get me and support me and love mm. love me in my heart. Mm-hmm. And so I appreciate y'all mm. a lot. Yeah. Love you, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love y'all too. So, coming off of our I just want to pick up where we left off and uh, Ross, when you when you were talking in our last episode mm-hmm. about um, the practicality, if you will, or the practical nature of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and coming back to that bedrock, you know, lens um, of Galatians five, the fruit of the Spirit, mm-hmm. and um, I started thinking. So, if I were going to describe, this is where my brain went while you <laughs> while you were talking to to a millennial. Like and not even that. Let's just say my baby, baby Rue, right? My mm-hmm. grandbaby I had to work her in. <laughs> so she gets to the age where she's asking about the Holy Spirit, right? I just started thinking about so Father God, right, who is always here and has revealed Himself. The Bible said through nature. If nothing else, we should have known about His power, His wonder, the awe. And everything he is uh, by trees, mountains, mm-hmm. earth, right? Just seeing him, uh, the, the, the manifest presence of God in nature, right? And then the new technology, if you will. So using it, the, the word technology, the new technology was Jesus Christ. I'm going to come and show you in flesh who, who, who I am. Because you guys still, some of you aren't hearing me. Some of you guys aren't relating to me in the way that I want as God said. And so I'm going to send Jesus, myself, to earth, Mm. right? To live and breathe and talk and to show you who I care about, not just what I care about, but who I care about, Mm. right? Friend of sinners, right? That's good. Um, The poor, the oppressed, the broken, healing people. Like, here's what I do. Here's what I care about. But, But Jesus said, I'm going away, right? But don't freak out. Never fear. And so it was Emmanuel, God with us, but now the temple that you brought up, Mm -hmm. it's God in us. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to come back, and my spirit is going to live in you. So it's not just God with us now, it's God in us. The new technology, it's the app. (laughs) It's the (laughs) interface. The new technology, the interface is the Holy Spirit. Mm. How are we interfacing with God? It's God in us. And... That is so, again, I think I said this at the end, it's radical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, like, really? Is, am I the manifest presence of Creator God? Mm-hmm. How else are we talking? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How else are, are we illuminated right now? How, mm-hmm. how else are we living, breathing? In Him we live and breathe and have our, our very being. Mm-hmm. So I think believing that can be a stretch for... Mm. It's like, oh, that sounds like almost humanism, if you will. Right. Like, but it's like, no, isn't this New Testament theology mm-hmm. that on the day of Pentecost, it was displayed that the power of God is going to live in us? 
So respond, respond to that. Do you, do you feel like we think that's too radical to truly believe? I, I think sometimes, you know, you can feel that way, but it's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's what it is. It's, you can't get away from it. So with God creating us um, and we being a part of him and him living in, in us, Sometimes just coming to that manifestation of it is the journey of it and the Holy Spirit, you know, and in this episode, we're going to talk about in connection. So sometimes I don't realize that until I'm connected in community to you. That's right. Mm. Okay. So there's a part, there's another part in the scriptures that we, we know that they they say that we, we tell the scripture in part. So there's some stuff we don't mm. know. I won't know until I'm connected to you. Well, and here's, you know? the, here's the other interesting thing about that, too, is mm -hmm. in that verse, uh, Second Corinth, or 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that talks about we are the temple of God, temple of the Holy Spirit. When, when Paul says, you are the temple, that is a plural word. That mm. is, y'all are the temple. And so uh, what the temple was, it wasn't just a place where God's spirit dwelled. It was also a place where God's people came mm -hmm. together, right? And so baked into that language and baked into that idea is the fact that we are created as the temple to be with others. And that's the way that God's spirit manifests as well. Yes, I hear so much. Oh, thank you. The I hear so of good, temples. <laughs> I, I hear right. so much. And, and why wouldn't we in this Western, rugged, individualistic yeah. mindset think about God being my personal Lord and Savior, which, okay, great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's all about me and this individual instead of the collective, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the we, and, and uh, there's this thing, my brain's going with Richard Rohr's cosmic egg right now, but we can come <laughs> back to that in, in his uh, wisdom pattern book. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's the collective, mm -hmm. so the church, the community the, of, of faith, the mm -hmm. community of believers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that when we talk about the Holy Spirit being practical, and we, we read the list in Galatians 5 of the fruit. So first, we have to empty ourselves before we can be filled with anything. So when people want to know about practically how, what does the Holy Spirit look like in my life? Well, you know, Paul talks about this, the spiritual nature, warring against the sinful nature, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I have to die to some things, empty myself before I can be filled with anything, Right, mm -hmm. I, I think I told in that episode about our faith journey early in my marriage. Right. I had to empty myself of a lot of pride and anger before I could be filled with the Spirit. Before I had to, you know, put to death some of the things that were battling against my submission to the will of God in my life. Mm -hmm. Right before it would be displayed. Um, so once you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We, we talk around here a lot about receiving hope and giving hope. Mm -hmm. So we have to receive something first, right? Mm -hmm. I love the fact that the Holy Spirit's been called the helper, mm -hmm. yes. the comforter, Yes, right? Jesus, like, I'm sending all these things for you. And so I wanted to bring this up. When you said the first Corinthians, I thought about our, our uh, theme verse mm -hmm. in the healing place, mm -hmm. second Corinthians one, three and four. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Mm -hmm. If you know, want to know what the Holy Spirit looks like in my life, you receive comfort at a time of your life, that you need it, mm. and then you turn around and give comfort to someone else. Mm. That's the power of the Holy Spirit working mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, good. that's so good. You know, I think um, talking about how this plays out in in the world, I and, and talking about community and being with one another, I listened to this podcast um, with who interviewing um, a former U.S. Surgeon General his name's Dr. Murthy, Vivek Murthy, and uh, he wrote a book called Together, 
and I love the the byline is um, healing power of human connection in a sometimes lonely world. And it's all about, uh, the, the book is about the loneliness epidemic mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. um, loneliness uh, is, you know, experienced by, he says, 22% of Americans, which is more than diabetes and those who smoke. And he says that... I think it's higher than that. I that do Where did he get 22%? Sure. So he's, like, and he said that loneliness... <laughs> I'm going to argue I'm with this doctor. Like <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it's, we got he's, a point. Go he said that loneliness uh, increases the risk of, of heart disease, mm-hmm. obviously anxiety and depression, um, uh, and of dementia, and that, it, that it, it's also you know, related to a lot of, of addictive behaviors too, whether it's mm-hmm. alcoholism or drug addiction or something like that. But... Um, I love, he, he has this quote and he says, he says, I, and I'm, I'm not sure what he believes on, I don't know what his worldview is, but he says this, he says, despite being a doctor who has prescribed a number of medications over the years, uh, the, uh, that one of the most powerful medicines we have is love and the vehicle through which love is delivered are relationships. Mm-hmm. So, so good. if if this doctor who is mm-hmm. studying this, you know, challenge that we're facing as Americans um, and, you know, probably throughout the world, too, but he's focusing on this and he's finding that the solution or a solution is love through relationships that is obviously laid out in scripture for us. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think that's very telling and points to the power of the Holy Spirit love through relationships and how, you know, our, the way that, that, that our worldview kind of plays itself out points to this fact that we should be in relationship with others. Mm -hmm. Spoonie told me about, uh, yesterday going and helping. So we talk about receiving hope, giving hope. Mm -hmm. We received so much, um, with all of the people who call cross timbers home Mm -hmm. and see what we're doing through our hope center and who want to donate to help people. And so we received a lot, and then we turned around and gave and fed thousands of people Mm -hmm. yesterday and gave food and water to people who needed it through our Hope Center. And there was so many other people who mobilized, you know, right there around where we live in Boyd, some a new owner of the pizza place, a shout-out to the pizza place uh, under new ownership in Boyd, Texas, (laughs) um, had an opportunity to get a ton of pallets of water donated at uh, uh, or at wholesale cost, mm-hmm. so they bought it and then donated it to the surrounding community. Wow. Um, so it's my my new favorite pizza place, and I haven't <laughs> had one slice of pizza yet. Um, but it's that when you when you went, Spoonie, if you were, I mean, you were in Snowpocalypse too. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. And a lot of times in our pain, in our trouble. The trouble that I mentioned in Second Corinthians that Paul t- writes about in, for, in Second Corinthians, if you were just focused on your own trouble and pain and stress and worry mm-hmm. about your house and about provision and about all the stuff going on wrong at your house, I mean, there's a time for that. Mm-hmm. But if you stay stuck in that, looking at your own thing, and you don't receive any hope, then you're not going to turn around and go be available to go pass out food and water mm-hmm. to other people who need it. Absolutely. And so many times, and you know, God bless us, we're all struggling, mm-hmm. but so many times we stay stuck in our stuff, mm-hmm. and it's like we never get to the point where that hope is turned into then, we don't, re- we, we don't get hope, we right. don't really receive it, right. and so we don't turn around and give it because we're kind of stuck in our, in our pain. Mm-hmm. And s- so much of, I think, an anecdote for suffering is taking your, you know, the the navel gazing, <laughs> taking your view off of yourself and looking out and going, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, people have it so much worse. Oh, yes. And again, not to minimize anything you're going through in your pain, but man, looking at people who need, and if you received anything to, to those much have been given, much is required, right? Yes. Man, we got to turn around and give got to people. To. But, but I know how in my life that, that how pain can make me very self-focused and, mm-hmm. and selfish. And I think... One last thing, and then I'll shut up for for a second. <laughs> that you, back to that fine. metaphor of the plumber, you know, me me being under the sink, and so God gives me the wrench at the time I need it. Um, if if God sees a, again a conduit, a channel that 
all of his resources, his love, his finances, all the stuff that he wants to give, the comfort, if he sees it flowing, he's going to pour in. Mm-hmm. He's going to pour into your life because it's flowing. If it's dammed up, yes, sir. if you're a dam, <laughs> yeah. because you're worried about you and you need to receive it all and you want to keep it all or hoard it all, it's not going to flow, right? And you wonder, why isn't the power of the Holy Spirit in my life? Why do, why do I not feel the power of the Spirit? Maybe you're a dam instead of a conduit. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You saying that reminds me of like, it just visualized like, you know like how a, it talks about living water. The Holy Spirit is living water. and We have this living water within us and you talking about being dammed up. It makes me think about... Um, you know how there's like bubbling brooks or like springs of water that come up, but after a storm, like there's a lot of debris that has to be mm. cleared off. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about, like clearing that debris and allowing that spirit to flow in you as you're connecting with other people and, and you are living that river of life inside of you and you're sharing it with somebody else. But sometimes we do have to, like, and we need our our friends to be in relationship with us to help clear that debris sometimes so yes. that it can flow yes. freely. Good, good. Mm-hmm. Ooh, oh, that's good. so good. Very nice. Yeah. Yes. You just come up with that? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's good, Glenda. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's the truth, though, speaking yeah. of that. I mean, and I have, yeah. like, those intimate friends. Yes. That, that that's what we're there for. Like, I'm fully known. I'm fully loved. I'm encouraged. Um like, and I know that, and they're the ones that say, like, have you prayed about it? What is the Spirit mm-hmm. telling you? Yes. And then they go to the next step, and they're like, how are you responding to the Spirit? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm being obedient, and sometimes I'm not. And I can count on this small group of people to say, be obedient. Do what God is calling you to do. And it's powerful, and it keeps the Spirit, that li- river of life flowing, bubbling up, because I'm in community with them. Um, and it's unconditional. They're not judging me. They're just sitting with me with full acceptance. What that made me think of is, and I've always wrestled with, if God's in us, you know, the Holy Spirit's in me, and he's in you, and he's in you, like, again, individually. The Bible says, where two or more are gathered, there am I also. It's like, well, wait, isn't it with one? But to me, what you mm-hmm. just beautifully described is the power of two or more together mm-hmm. in communion with the Spirit. It's so, so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so to, your, to that point, yeah. that's why, and over here, just like all you guys just mentioned it, and my mind went to what uh, Ross was saying in the book that he was reading about the doctor that was bringing out um, the aspect of loneliness. And that's what the opposite of community does. It wants to isolate us. Mm-hmm. Because if I can, is- the more I can isolate you, the more and the less frequent that the Holy Spirit can move through communion and connection and in agreement. Mm-hmm. Because it's something about being around you guys, being around a person, mm-hmm. that uh, life starts to come. It's, I'm, I'm reminded of also in the scripture. I believe when Mary, um, she was pregnant with Jesus Mm. and then Elizabeth. And when they greeted, they said that the baby jumped and leaped. (laughs) They didn't say a word. So to your point about coming and connecting, sometimes it's just being in communion with people, Mm -hmm. just being in the same room, Mm -hmm. being in the same building, being in the same area, you will get this energy of life that starts flowing through you that you didn't even know you had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Loneliness, the opposite of that is being with someone, mm-hmm. you know? And so <laughs> have that's, you, that's, yes. that's the part that sticks out in my mind about community. Have you ever been in a room with a bunch of people and somebody comes over, you haven't spoken a word, mm-hmm. and somebody comes over to you, they've been watching you, and they say, hey, are you a Christian? Have you ever had that? You know, <laughs> hey, are you a Christian? And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're kind of think, did I just cuss? Did I flip somebody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and they 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 say, yeah. I, I I knew it. I mean, man, when that uh, happens, yes. it's like, what was that? Yeah. What do they What do they notice? Yes. You know, yeah. was it some mystic, you know, mystical thing, or or was there something very practical, but something that was just exuding? Yes. You know, and I think it you. also is something in them. Mm. Oh yeah, that spirit they don't spirit know or, encounter or can't the recognition. really realize, yeah. but it's in them as well. But they don't know 
what it is. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, they, and yeah. so they recognize, wait a minute, or is something that they want to have. Yeah. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And talking about comfort, going back to that verse in Second Corinthians, I, I remember I've, I've told this story before, but in college, one of my really good friends, his brother uh, died by suicide. Mm-hmm. And um, I got a call. It was Christmas Day. I got a call that this had happened and that the funeral was going to be later that week. And I remember talking to my dad before I left and was just thinking, man, I don't know what to say to my friend. Like, I, I have no idea what I'm going to say to him. And he said, you don't have to say anything. You just tell him that you love him and that you're there for him. And that spoke to me about the power of presence, right? The power of just being with someone and the comfort that that provides um, in, in the midst of the pain that they, they are going through. Yeah. yeah. Br- oh, wow. you, know, you brought, I think it was off mic, where you were talking about um, not preparing, just when, yeah. when the disciples were worried about what they were going to say. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, you know, hey, just show up, mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit will be there and give you the words to mm-hmm. say in the moment. Yes. If we're available to be filled mm-hmm. and to actually be a channel, a conduit for the presence of the Holy Spirit in that moment, instead of when I, when I did Alan's memorial service on Saturday, all week I dreaded writing that eulogy and putting it all, you know, together. And I had stood on that stage, you know, in August of 2019 doing the funeral for his father, mm-hmm. one of my best friends in the world. And I had never dreamed that I'd be standing there, mm-hmm. you know, such a short time later doing the, the eulogy for his son. Um, but as I finally sat down to wrote that, I was telling Spoonie, I just let... It's not. It wasn't the pastor or the, you know, the performer giving some eulogy or saving people or, pra- or or preaching a sermon. It was a friend. It was Brian. It was a friend who who was hurting for this family. And I just literally prayed, just Holy Spirit, just show up, just be there. And and the the peace that I felt in that moment as I stood up with these friends in, in this room, the, the love and the support for this family that was on the front row grieving. I had no thought of pre-planned, canned right. sermon speech. Right. It was just the compassion that I allowed my heart to feel in that moment. I felt like it was the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and there's been days, there's been times in my life, if you will, that I've allowed that to happen. And there's been times where I haven't because mm-hmm. it was too, I, I had to be Brian. You know, Brian had to be ready and prepared mm, yeah, yeah. and planned, and and man, it's so much more beautiful, and I, dare I say, fun to just relax and let the Holy Spirit show up and and be present in that moment. Yeah, it's nothing like the authenticity of mm. of what you're going through in that moment. Because as you're saying that, I'm reminded of Jesus when he heard of his friend Lazarus dying. Mm-hmm. Mm. The Bible says he wept. Like, that was the realness of Jesus. It's nowhere else it's recorded that Jesus did that. Mm -hmm. But he wept. And then his talk goes on to talk about how he got up to go see about the family. Mm -hmm. But I I just get this sense that as he got closer, he started missing his friend that much the more. Mm -hmm. So as he got closer, he called Lazarus, (laughs) who was dead. (laughs) Yeah. And the, and the Jesus in him, the Godness in him, when he spoke and said, come forth, Lazarus had to come forth. Well, as you ministered on Saturday and did the eulogy and you were just a friend, peace had to come and rest on that family. Yeah, yeah. You called that forth. You didn't know you were, but the authenticity of who you were, are and who yeah. you were in that moment. And so God just uses these moments, I believe, through the Holy Spirit, yeah, that He wants us to just be <laughs> authentic with people. It's like, what? How else could we really do this episode without just being authentic with each other? The, I mean, just look at the sequences: the the week of freezing snow and all of that, and at the end you had to preach a eulogy. And I'm looking at the Holy Spirit working in each and every one of our lives separately but we're together with him in our minds and with our friends glenna opening up her home she could have said you know what hey kurt we over look god is just <laughs> look hey were we talking the other episode about 
you know, the the argument of, you know, who has God, the Holy Spirit, the more, and who doesn't. Yes. They could have went there. They could have went there and said, well, God's blessings is over the masses, you know. <laughs> Our power didn't go out. But they didn't do that. What did they do? They saw the condition, and they said, you know what? Let's open our home to our friends. Wow. What yeah. a display of love. Yes. The Holy Spirit moving through community, yeah. through relationships. And so, uh, and then hearing Ross speak about, you know, because those are the toughest times, I believe, mm -hmm. is how do you pull on the Holy Spirit when, or how is the Holy Spirit going to show up when you have a friend that dies or you have a loved one to go that way? And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's crazy but how God does things. Yeah. But Saturday... I was speaking to you off off uh, this episode in in our office in your office. Mm -hmm. um, my wife got a call that uh, her nephew was killed, mm -hmm. and it was just and this was all just this past Saturday. So during the time you were you know preparing for the eulogy, here I am over here in another part of the city, you know going through this. So I had to comfort my wife so she can comfort her love, but. The Holy yes. Spirit brought peace. Mm -hmm. And so I just believe that that's what he wants because that's what he died for. And that's what he wants us to do is get that love to one another. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned this, this radical idea and it's hard to believe really can the, the God of the universe live in me. And I find myself trying to help people believe that. Mm -hmm. The people who come into the healing place, they don't, they don't believe that. Mm. It's like, yeah, the Christ, the, in Colossians, the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. They think Christ is in Toby or me yeah. or Spoonie, but they don't believe Christ is in them. Yes, yeah, yeah. And part of this mm. relationship of spirit-to-spirit -spirit communion is helping people, it's call out Lazarus yes. in another person. Mm -hmm. It's saying, come yes. forth. yes. Like when Jesus said, I mean, we sing about it, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is lives in me, lives in me. Does he? You know, can we believe it? And greater things, Jesus said, hey, greater things you're going to do. Like, really? Do we believe that? And I think so many times we just think, well, that was Jesus because he was God. And we don't believe that it's in us. And so I think that in that, that gift of, of, calling out the Spirit in someone else, yeah. seeing the Christ in them, recognizing the Christ in them, the hope of glory. And God knows we all need hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good so stuff. Good. It's, it's like, you know, you doing that. And sometimes God will allow us to be, to be an example of that love or that Holy Spirit moving through love. And they'll come and see it, like you said earlier about so you ever had someone walk up and say, hey, are you a Christian? Well, just imagine on, from Saturday, someone may develop, man, that had to be tough for Brian, but how did he do that? Yeah. And may come and ask, you know? And in that way, yeah. you get to share the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yeah. lifting you and your friend being connected, you being connected to the friend. And also I'm reminded of when, when Thomas, um, all the disciples that saw Jesus after he resurrected, and came back to life, and Tom was over there like, well, mm -hmm. well, what am I, chopped liver? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't get to come see me, but <clears throat> Jesus came and visited him and showed him the scars in his hand. Why? Because of his friend. Yeah. Because of community, you know? Today, this morning, I teared up as Angela Gentry walked in yes. my office mm -hmm. and, and yeah. just affirmed what, what happened on Saturday, and, and she was there, and I just just totally mm. appreciated what she did yes. to get everything set up and all the logistics and taking care of that family mm. like she does. But I teared up big time when Angela walked into my office because you want to talk about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That Again, the, the communion we have in the Holy Spirit, when I see the gifts of the Holy Spirit in mm -hmm. display, on display in Angela's life, I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed with that. And yes, when, when that spirit of Christ in her is recognizing the spirit, it, totally different gifts, right? <laughs> totally different. But that was on display yes. for that family that day. Mm -hmm. There was something that was uh, 
so enriching about that encounter this morning in my office that I'm not going to have. Now, now, I want to be real careful that I may not have with some stranger on the street, right? Yeah. Now, how would I have that encounter with the stranger on the street? I'm not saying, well, I got the Holy Spirit or Angela does, but you don't. Right. It's right. relationship. 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 Yeah. Get in relationship, relationship and let's call out yeah. the, the Christ in you, right? Mm-hmm. Let's 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 start to to see where where he is. Where are those gifts? Where are those passions? Where does that Christ? How does it play out and manifest in this person's life? Um, believing that. So let's talk real quick. We talk about level ten relationships. How do you move? Because I believe Christ is in that person. Yeah, they may not know it. <laughs> they may not have submitted to the Christ mm-hmm. in in their life in the Holy Spirit, and that may be another long <laughs> episode. Um, I mean, who does all the time, right? Right. Right. It's that battle. Of the battle. Uh, but how do you, what would be some practical things that you guys would say for people who want to move to a level 10 relationship with someone? They may be at a level two or three. They may feel like it's not really Holy Spirit communion. How would you approach making a relationship go from a level three or four to a, a level 10? I, I, I think, um, Backing up even before that, I know we're trying to we're trying to wrap up here, but I think that that sometimes you know when there is navel gazing, like what yeah. Brian was talking uh-huh. about, or when we're experiencing pain, um, we can it it's, it takes a lot of courage to step mm-hmm. out in that pain to connect with other people, and so I think that's one hindrance that that we have whenever we want to move to level ten relationships is having to having to step out of our pain, you know, and having to step out of that vulnerable place and share and, you know, and, and uncover that shame, you know, because we have a lot of shame around the things that we're, that we're experiencing. And so I think one of the, one of the first things that we can do is um, to really allow this, what we talked about in our last series about the, you know, start week, uh, allow the, 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 the strength that God has to wash over us and cover that shame so that we can feel, we can have the, the self-esteem and the self-respect to believe that other people want to be in relationship with us and mm-hmm. step out on that. So I think, I think that's a, a first step. Good. Thank you. So there's something that I've witnessed just all the years of my life um, as an adult, but I find that like when people pull together and have to work on a project together there's this intimacy that starts happening, um, whether it's the church floods and everybody's rolling up their sleeves and trying to help clean up the water and the furniture, and there's this camaraderie and working together, or let's say a church wants to remodel, or even like Saturday, people coming together and working together, There's that's the beginning of this intimacy. But I'm seeing as people like have a common goal, mm. And they're working towards that together and seeing each other's needs and in relationship and having these conversations, it's opportunity for the spirit to show up. And when you were talking about Saturday, it reminded me of the scripture in Acts 2 when it says, do you care if I share that? Do it. It says, um, the fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and Mm. to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And so, like, reading this and knowing what was going on in Denton, like, that's what it looked like. Yeah. Yes. We came together yes. to work to meet the needs of people in our community. And it's just a beautiful thing. So I just, what a great reflection. That's but perfect. that's, to me, is the springboard for these intimate relationships is the opportunity to work elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so many times we, in, in the church, we've, we've been in the fellowship hall 
fighting about what the Holy Spirit is and what it mm-hmm. isn't, instead of just submitting ourselves to the practical fruit of the Spirit that can play out in our lives when we're available with an open heart to love someone else, mm. expressing love, and let yeah. the Lord gift us in His time, in His way, as He sees fit, as the Bible says. Yes. That wind blows wherever it wants to blow, mm. and it's being a willing, available heart. So, man, thank you guys. Uh, I think this is going to maybe demystify the Holy Spirit a little bit and the, the practical nature of, of moving into level 10 Holy mm. Spirit-filled relationships with others. Um, that sometimes is sparked by some of our worst Mm -hmm. Mm. tragedies in our life. So, man, good being with you guys. You too. It's It's an honor. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our conversations. We really enjoyed recording them. So like, share, subscribe, or follow for more content. And we look forward to bringing you more in the future.